Amen. Take your Bibles, if you would, please, to Joshua chapter number seven. Joshua chapter number seven. Once upon a time, there was a group of people called the children of Israel. They were God's chosen people. I don't mean to say they were God's chosen people. I believe they still are God's chosen people. They are clearly set aside right now. They are in one of their wicked periods of time. There have been times throughout history when the children of Israel acted wickedly and God judged them. They are in a period and have been in a period of clear judgment for a long time. Uh, somebody says, well, that, that's our Jewish brethren. No, they are departed right now. I do believe that they're going to be grafted back in. I believe God is, they owe God and God's going to deal with his people again, uh, his chosen people. Right now we live in the church age. And we have to be mindful of when and where we live. But during this time frame, this is way back in, in history, just after the time of Moses and during the time of Joshua, the children of Israel, God uh, has used them in a, in, in a, in, and has allowed them 400 years of persecution. Things have gone really bad for them. They were in slavery. God freed them and brought them across the Red Sea, a beautiful picture of salvation. For 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness, disobedient to God. And God overthrew them in the wilderness. He overthrew an entire generation. Only two gray heads walked across Jordan. Joshua and Caleb. Most people, if you asked them who led the children of Israel into the promised land, they'd say Moses. That is not true. Moses was killed by God before he went across and so Moses did not go. Joshua and Caleb did. Joshua's in charge. It's an exciting time. God has blessed them. They've gone over now and they've, they've just conquered Jericho. And it's a wonderful time, a great victory and honor unto God. But somebody sinned and touched, touched the accursed thing. A man named Achan. Nobody knew about it. Not Achan's family. Not the leadership. They go up to Ai. And a bunch of men died needlessly at Ai. God is judging them and judging sin. And if we'll pick up tonight in Joshua chapter number 7 and verse number 24, we'll read about how God took care of the sin and where God took care of the sin. Joshua chapter number 7 and verse 24. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of the place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise, go up to Ai. I have given into thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king as thou didst unto Jericho and her king, only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourself. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. Tonight I want to preach. Camp Acor is closed. Camp Acor is closed. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we thank you for judgment. If not for judgment and the reality of hell, many of us might not have listened fully to the gospel. Lord, Lord we're so thankful. Those of us that are saved that we found the place of grace, we found the cross, we found Jesus Christ's blood that was shed for us. And we put our faith and trust in that blood. And you saved our soul. 
Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace and your mercy since that time of our salvation. Realizing that we'll still be judged, but not unto hell. But according to our works, unto reward and loss. Father, I pray you'd show us some truths from your word tonight. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Here in these verses that we read, there's a lot of great truth there. And there's a lot of good lessons that we can learn from there. And we kind of let up for sake of time, uh, kind of went through a little bit of the story, but understand that when Achan, he stole some silver and some gold and a Babylonian garment, he hid it among his own stuff and he hid it uh, there in, underneath a, a rug there in, in his tent and God saw it. Nobody else saw it. Nobody else knew it, but God knew it. But it affected everyone else. Listen, everybody but the children here, we understand that when somebody in our family sins, it affects the whole family. If you've been around church very long, and if you have a good church family, a real church family, not, not church people that kind of show up here and there and whatever, but if you have a real church family that, that you depend on and that depend on you and that you're involved in and you pray for them and you love them and you work hand in hand in and you sacrifice with and you give of your time and you give of your effort and you give of your love and you're giving of your treasure and you give of your time and tears and you're just part of each other because you're real church family. You know that when sin creeps in somewhere, it affects the whole body. God describes the, the local New Testament church as a body. We're not all eyeballs. We're not all ears. We're not all feet. But we all have our place. And if something's wrong, everybody feels it. You ever had an ingrown toenail? That'll make you walk in circles. One time we were up in Yellowstone, I got bit on an eyelid by a, by a mosquito. I walked around, I needed an eye patch. I was going around to be pirate grass for the day. Man, that hurt, getting bit on your stupid eyelid. It was just a skeeter bite on one of the smallest parts of my great big body. But I'm telling you, that's all I thought about all day. You ever smashed your finger? That'll get your attention. You get some little hurt somewhere. Get a bee sting. Do, do, a different, do some different kind of work than you're used to doing. Muscles will hurt that you didn't even realize you had. It's just some little stupid muscle, but all of a sudden you can't move it right. Get, let, a, let a disc in your back get bulged. Suddenly your legs don't work anymore. Your body doesn't work. None of your muscles want to cooperate. You can't walk anymore. All you can do is lay in bed and cry and ask for help and pain meds. Even when the smallest part of your body hurts, the whole body's distracted. The whole body hurts. That's how it is with sin. God could have just struck lightning down on, on Achan's tent and that would have been the end of it. He could have just let everybody else go up to battle and only Achan got killed and that would have fixed it. It's not the way God had it. Listen, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I don't think God's an independent Baptist. See, too many independent Baptists like to keep secrets. God wasn't for secrets. He said, cast lots. You'll find out who it is. Man, they cast lots. All of a sudden, boom, they're like, Achan. Don't lie to us. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Tell us what you did, boy. He, and he, man, he came clean. God wanted everybody to know what happened. Because God wasn't going to be putting up with any nonsense moving forward. And by the way, that the body wasn't going to move forward as long as there was still sin in the camp. So they met in a place called Achor. And they, the whole camp went down there. And they went down and, and uh, all of a sudden they, they got to that place together. And they took Achan 
And it says they stoned him and burned them. You say, who was the them? His sons, his daughters, his wife. It was everybody. It was all his family. They burned his cattle. They, they burned all his stuff. Nobody else was going to live in his tent. They burned his tent. He said, man, that was going to be a big hole to dig. They didn't dig a hole. They piled up rocks. Why? Because every time they came back by Acor, they'd see it. And it was a reminder that God takes sin very, very seriously. But he didn't leave them in Acor. He didn't say, now thou shalt stay in Acor, and forever thou shalt remember the judgment of thine brother Achan. He said, Acor, hey, here in Acor, we're going to pile up some stones and that'll be there as a negative testimony about what, how I feel about sin. Now the rest of you, get on back to work. Sometimes we'll let somebody else's sin get us out of work. Hey, God wants to deal with the sin, friend. Oh, yes. God wants to deal with the wickedness. God wants to deal with the sin. Hey, even that thing that you and I don't think anybody else saw, God sees. And He wanted to take care of it. And He did take care of it. And after it was over, immediately. You go to chapter 8 and verse 1, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Hey, can I tell you today, insert your name there. Fear not, and be thou not dismayed. It's time to go back to work. Once you get the sin taken care of, you get back to work. Look at the, the spiritual truth here. Now listen. In this, there is a sin unto death and don't think God won't kill you. You keep fooling with Him. Don't think God won't kill you. But I'll tell you this. The goal after the sin was dealt with was the same as before the sin. The goals don't change. Sometimes they think, well, I sinned, so now I can't do this or that. Listen, if God didn't kill you, just deal with the sin and get back to work. Camp Acor is closed. Listen, deal with the sin. Do you know where you can deal with the sin? Hey, we have prayer time. You can come right down here and deal with it right here. Now that's not the only place you can deal with sin. You can bow your head right where you're at right now and get right with God. You go, I'll do it right after the preaching. Or now. Waiting to take care of it is why you feel the way you do right now. Half the church sitting around going, is he preaching against me? Did somebody talk? Have my, my kids haven't been playing with his kids. I don't know how we know. Listen, God knows. And I'm not shooting at anybody. I'm not picking at anybody. But if there's anything that you think is unpleasing to the Lord in your life, you ought to start praying right now and get it dealt with. Because God wants it dealt with. Do you realize AI still had to be conquered? That the whole promised land still had to be conquered. They weren't going anywhere. They couldn't have the smallest victory. They sent a couple of spies up. They said, AI's a joke, man. We don't need everybody. Okay, most of you guys stay home. Anybody up for a fight? Let's go. And they went up and, and over 30 of them got killed. Can't even achieve the smallest goals. This was going to be easy. You can't even do the easy stuff. You go, even the easy stuff in my life isn't working right now. Yeah. Maybe you've got a sin problem. Maybe you need to visit Camp Acor and get it taken care of. But once you get it taken care of, get, you don't have to have a new plan. You don't have to go, now what does God... God wants you to do the same thing after that you were supposed to do before. Get back to work. He says, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Get back to work. Those small things that you can't do, you can do them now once the sin is dealt with. It's time to move forward again. Listen, let me give you some help. And this is free tonight. We already took the offering. We're not going to do that again. 
after you get the sin dealt with, and after you ask God to forgive you, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He's promised. If you'll ask Him, and your heart's right, and you're really asking Him, He'll forgive you. And after He forgives you, you need to forgive the goofball in the mirror. And sometimes we believe God can forgive us, but we can't forgive ourselves. Listen, you are going to hinder the work of the Lord if you cannot look yourself in the mirror and forgive yourself. We're supposed to forgive others, but you've got to forgive you. You've got to take some prayer time for you. You've got to have some grace for you. You've got to show some mercy to yourself. If you don't, you'll hinder not just yourself. You'll hinder the entire body of Christ. You'll, you'll hinder the entire work of the Lord in this place. Maybe you're the Aiken in the group. I don't know. Maybe you're the reason. I look myself in the mirror and say, am I, am I the problem? Am I the reason finances are tied? Am I the reason nobody showed up for soul winning? Am I the reason that this didn't work right? Is, am, am I the reason this person got mad? Is this the reason this person cries all the time? Am, am I the reason? And I pray about it. If I am the reason, I try to go and fix those things. But... After I ask for forgiveness, I ask the Lord to forgive me, I ask people to forgive me, i got to ask Christ to forgive me. Hey man, we can't do that anymore, okay? But God has a call on your life. God still wants you. You're not dead, so let's just move forward. Let's just go back to it. Let's go knock some more doors. Let's go love on some more people. Let's try to help some hurting people over here. Let's just study more, pray more, do more, preach more. Let's just be as holy as we can and move on. we got to move on. We, listen, Camp Acor is closed. Once it's dealt with, it's dealt with. Move on. We've got to learn to move on. We've got to learn to move forward. The same goals that God had for your life before the whole sin thing was realized is still there. If God had a call on your life before, He's still got a call on your life. If God laid it on your heart to help X person, then it's still there to help X person. We've got to get to the place. Listen, there's a lot of people who let sin stop them forever. They let... Or they'll do this. They'll mess up really bad. They'll come preacher. I need help. And I'm like, okay, man. What, what happened? And then we're both like, oh, no. Okay. And then we catch ourselves and we're like, okay, we can fix this. Lord, help us to fix this. Give us wisdom. We need wisdom beyond our years. And, and we're going to have to get this right. And we confess it and we get, move past it. And all of a sudden they'll get right. And then all of a sudden they'll quit coming to church. I'm like, what happened? And they're like, oh, well, I started visiting a church down here. I'm like, why? Well, I just felt really weird because you knew about that sin I was in. I just felt, it made me feel weird. Every time I walked in, I just, I felt like you were looking at me like, because you knew. I wanted to go somewhere where nobody knew about my sin. That makes me want to thunder punch somebody. You go through the heartache and the hurt and the tears and the pain and the vomit and the late night calls and the busting up the fights, the trying to talk the police officers into having mercy, the talking to the judge, you go into court and put your hand on, you know, and, and then they walk out on you? Are you kidding me? I got a death threat because of you and now you're walking out? To me, that's as bad as the original sin. Good night of living, man. Some people have no honor. Hey, I like being around people that know all about me. I'm an open book. I, I'm not good at secrets. The only thing I'm worse about secrets is electronics. Every time I get something new, I go... I, I would like for this to get some emails. I'd like to be able to get online. I'd like to be able to send and get messages. Can, can you, you already know my passwords. Can you take this and make that happen? I give it to Brother Jason. Miss Guelda up, up keeps it. My wife knows my, all my passwords. Somebody, my wife was looking, we were looking at an auction the other day. 
And, and she was trying, and somebody came in, there was an emergency, and she's telling me, bid, bid, bid. Finally, she's like, I know all of his passwords. She just logged in as me and started bidding. I had mixed emotions about that. We won. <laughs> she was very aggressive. But there's no secrets. Do you, do you know what? I don't have any temptation to do anything bad on the computer or on my phone. I, I just don't. It, it, but if I did, fear and common sense would kick in. Because my associate pastors, he's a, a network engineer. And my secretary... Worked for the FBI as a computer forensics expert for over 42 years. And my wife is a paralegal. I'm hosed, man. I can't do nothing. I'm just like, whatever. I go to like six auction sites and, uh, you know, a couple of whatever's, emails and, and a social network. That's all I know how to do. That's all I need. That's how we keep up with people. I don't need 20 websites. I don't need 50 websites. I don't need the headaches. I go to like seven, eight places. That's what, I, that's what I do. I don't have to worry about my history. I don't have to worry about temptation. I don't have to worry about that stuff. Why? They know me. And I encourage them. Go in and look. You can read all my messages. You can read all my emails. I don't keep... Some things are private, but nothing is secret. We don't keep secrets. Why? Sin is kept secret. Now, there are things that are private, but there are no secrets. You can't have them. I don't want a life full of secrets. We don't have to secret lock stuff up so our kids don't see them. That was the biggest temptation growing up as a kid. Whether they keep hitting somebody was at my house or we were at their parents' house, you're always like, all right, what's up? Got any stuff hid? Like, yeah, but we don't know how to get into it. I was like, oh, let's go. Man, we're in there like, like you know, like safe crackers trying to, we just wanted, the reason we wanted to see it is because nobody wanted us to see it. It was secret. We didn't necessarily care about the bad stuff. We just wanted to know what secrets were. It must be good if they're hiding it from the kids. We didn't know if it was porn or candy. We just wanted to know what it was. It was usually porn. Anyway. <laughs> it was, you know, but it's secrets hide sin. No secrets. Listen. If I lose my cool, my wife and kids, my secretary, some of the office staff, they're going to see that. I can't lose my cool. Can't lose my cool. I don't want to have to deal with the Lord about hurting someone else's Christian walk with my sin. Sometimes people quit because of their own sin. Because they're embarrassed. They think somebody's going to judge them. They want to go somewhere where everybody thinks they're perfect and they've grown up just polishing their halo. I'll tell you who I like to serve with. People that don't have secrets and real people. I like to serve alongside overcomers who are just real people who've had some failures in their life. They're not excited about their failures. Nobody was excited about getting busted doing something wrong. Nobody was excited about a divorce. Nobody was excited about, uh, you know, getting fired from their job. From some... Listen, nobody's excited about that. But do you know what they did? They overcame those things and served God anyway. Imperfect people serving the Lord. You say, well, I just don't know if that's... It's all in here. That's what this is full of. A bunch of imperfect people that God uses anyway. So if you've been involved in something, hey, overcome it, honey. Get over it. I know it's hard. I know it hurts. But once you get through your problems, once you get through your failures, find your bootstraps, pull them up, and let's move forward. Let's get out of Acor. Acor is a place of pain. Acor is a place of hurt. Let's get on up to AI. We're going to win this one. Let's get on up to AI. First thing God says, be not, he says, fear not, neither be thou dismayed. And at the end of verse 2, he says, lay thee an ambush at the city beyond. You know what he says? Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Let's get a plan to win. Let's start winning again. Friend, that's what God wants from you. That's what God wants from me is for us to get out of the place where we were having the problem and get it judged, get it taken care of, and let's lay out a plan to win. God, help us to be overcomers and winners. 
I don't want to go through life being a spiritual loser. I don't think anybody wants to go through life being defined as a spiritual loser who just got hung up on some stupid sin and either couldn't get through it or couldn't get past it after they got through it. You've got to get forgiveness of the Lord, then you've got to forgive yourself, and then together let's lay out a strategy for victory. Don't get thrown off track. When it comes to sin creeping back into your life, Listen, understand, that's the old man. That's this flesh we live in. Don't let the old man come back and have his way with you. Go, go over to Colossians 3. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Colossians chapter number 3. Man, I love this. Let me just read this to you. And as I'm reading it to you, in Colossians chapter number 3, please pay attention to the words. Please pay attention. The Apostle Paul is writing this to New Testament believers in a New Testament church. Guys, I know we have air conditioning. I know we dress differently. I know we speak a different language. But he's writing this to folks like us. If you be risen with Christ, seek, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead and your, your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with Him in glory. Look at it. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. The wrath of God is coming on people that are involved in those very things. In the which ye also walk sometime when you lived in them. But now, ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Do you, do you see what Paul is saying here? He said, listen, God is going to judge this earth. He's going, to, he's, going to, he's going to come and judge evil people. And he says, you need to mortify that part of you. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Listen, he says, I want you just to kill that part. That part is dead and gone, man. That needs to be dead to you. You don't go there. You don't think about that. You might have used to live like that. Some of you did. But now you're dead and risen with Christ. And he says, hey, I want you to take off some new things. He said, I want you to take, take off some new things. Some additional things. He says, I want you to take these off. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, a fornication, all that. And then he says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. God is going to judge this wicked, hell-bound world for all those wicked things in the which also you walked sometime when you lived in them. But now, now listen, I want you to go even further and clean up your life even more. I want you to get out of Camp Acor. And you know what you're going to leave behind? Anger, wrath, malice. Blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Don't lie to one another. And you put off the old man. Get rid of the old man with his deeds. Put off the old man. And you put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge. Renewed in knowledge. Knowledge of what God wants you to do. Knowledge of what God wants you to, how God wants you to live. Knowledge about how God feels about sin. Knowledge about how God feels about overcomers. Knowledge about how God wants you to get the victory. 
Knowledge about how God wants you to deal with your sin and then get over yourself. Hey, you're not that important, Jack. Get over yourself and move on. There's a Savior to serve. And there's people that need our help. we got to get over ourselves and move forward. we got to, hey, Camp Acor is closed. It's time to head up to Ai and whip some Aites. It's time to start living on the promises. God calls us to live in the promised land. He called the children of Israel to live in the promised land. Hey, He called us to live on some precious promises of things that He has for the believer. Spiritually, we need to live in the promised land. We need to get on across Jordan, have our hearts right, get rid of the old man, put on the new, and move forward for the great cause of Christ. Tonight, if you've got some sin in your life, some unconfessed sin, I hope you've already started. Already started. You need to get rid of it, friend. It's time to move forward. Hey, it's time to set a strategy for victory. Camp Acor is closed.